Hello everyone, I'm Peng Gao from Princeton University. I'm very glad to be here to present our work on enabling real-time abnormal system defect detection to enhance, secu uh, se to enhance enterprise security. This work was done in collaboration with Professor Xu Shengxiao from Case Western Reserve University and colleagues from NC Laboratories America. My advisors are Professor Sanjeev Kukani and Professor Pratik Mito. Today we got more and more breaking news about cyber attacks. For example, the Equifax data breach happened in last year has disclosed the sensitive information of around 143 million US customers. Besides, more and more uh, large companies that have web protected businesses suffer from great financial losses due to these attacks. These advanced persistent threat attacks, namely APTs, leverage sophisticated techniques to exploit multiple vulnerabilities in the system. Besides, due to strong economical or political motives, adversaries are continuously monitoring the target and trying to steal valuable data. Here is a typical setup for the APT attack. The goal of the attack is to steal the data stored in the database server. In order to achieve this goal, the attack first conducts an initial compromise by sending a crafted email to the victim. The email has a attachment which has a malicious uh, micro embedded. The victim then opens the email, clicks the attachment and runs the macro, which downloads and executes a malware to create a backdoor to the attacker. With the backdoor, the attacker penetrates into the internal host and runs the database cracking tools to obtain database credentials. With the credentials, the attacker then penetrates into the database server and drops another malware to create another backdoor. Finally, the attacker runs the database dumping tools to dump the database content and send the data dump back to his host through the backdoor created in the previous step. This completes the entire APT sequence. As we can see, these APT attacks are very sophisticated. They involve multiple steps exploiting different types of vulnerabilities in the system, which exhibit different abnormal system behaviors. For example, in the step C3, the, pro, uh, the program gsecdump.exe was started by command.exe, may be known to some security analysts. Besides, there exist abnormally large transfers on the database server. And there exist some abnormal process creations on the, uh, on the uh, client. For example here, this excel.exe starts java.exe, which obviously is very suspicious because excel never starts java. Uh, since these suspicious or abnormal behaviors could happen on any host in the enterprise, ranging from employee stations to the servers. We need solutions that can record all the underlying behaviors of the system. This leads to the idea of ubiquitous system monitoring. System monitoring uh, collects information about system calls from, uh, from kernels. The audit logs produced has a unified structure which is not bound to specific applications. These logs record how uh, record information about how applications interact with system resources, such as files, processes, and network connections, in the form of system events. Recognizing the need for a timely anomaly detection and the complexity for the APT attack, we propose to leverage stream processing and continuous queries to enable the real-time abnormal system behavior detection. Building such system requires us to solve two major challenges. First, the system has to provide a expressive and concise interface to express a broad set of uh, abnormal behaviors. These behaviors involve, uh, include the rule-based behaviors as well as the advanced anomaly behaviors. Besides, system monitoring produces huge amounts of daily logs. For example, in a typical lab environment consisting of 100 hosts, the amount of logs produced would be around 50 gigabytes with the throughput around 250, uh, uh, 2,500 events per second. Besides, the, stream, uh, the streaming scenario may introduce multiple concurrent queries in execution, which may incur considerable overhead. 
Therefore, building a system that enables real-time analytics over this large-scale stream data is quite challenging. Uh, in the audit log and forensics space, existing works primarily work on reducing the size of the data and improving the precision of the causality analysis. But there, exist, uh, there lacks a unified tool or platform to query the data efficiently. Recognizing such limitation, in this work, we build a novel stream query system for abnormal system behavior detection. Our system was built on top of existing tools and our system provides a domain-specific query language, namely SEQL, or stream-based anomaly, stream anomaly query language, that can enable users to specify a broad set of uh, attack behaviors using the specialized constructs for security. Besides, we build our query execution engine to enable the fast execution of the stream queries. We deploy uh, data monitoring uh, data collection agents uh, on every host in the enterprise. Our agents uh, collect uh, critical attributes from system entities and system activities. Our language supports roughly four types of anomaly, uh, anomaly models. Uh, this rule-based anomaly specifies the behavior rules of system activities. For example, in this single event query, we first define the event pattern that this process reads a file and the file name could be either of these history files. And then in the return clause, we return desired attributes from the matched events. Besides, this is the rule-based multi-event query, which we define multiple event patterns. The global constraints enforce the constraints which uh, all of the event patterns should satisfy. And then we define the event patterns successively in the form of subject, operation, object, with certain attributes to constrain the search. And then in this with clause, we define the temporal relationships among these, among these events. Basically, the event one should happen first, then event two, then event three, then event four. And we also support the attribute relationship specification either explicitly or implicitly. In this example, notice that we use the same symbol F1 for uh, both of the two events. That implicitly means that the entities referred by this F1 are the same. And also we support a lot of syntax shortcuts. So for example, the context-aware attribute inference to make the query more concise and friendly to use. Besides the simple rule-based anomalies, time series anomalies are useful to detect things such as network specs. In the time series anomalies, we, provide, uh, we propose the idea of sliding windows in which we partition the stream into different slides. And we norm, uh, normally pro, uh, propose the idea of stateful computation over the sliding windows. A state is simply the set of aggregation values. And notice that for different windows, the state may change. And then we maintain the, both the current state, namely the current values in the current window, as well as the previous state or the history state. Using these states, we can compose a, a complex uh, time series anomaly models in this alert class. For example, here, this is a simple moving average model for the network spec detection on the SQL server. We further extend the stateful computation syntax to support the invariant-based anomalies. The idea is that we want to enable the specification of the violations for the system invariants. Notice that here we have an invariant block after the state block in which we define that an invariant here is a set of child process of the Apache process. We train the invariant for 10 windows, and then we check for the further windows if there exists a process that, does not, that is not included in the event, namely the, uh, in the invariant, namely the invariant violation. Using this uh, query, we can check if Apache starts some unexpected child process, for example, batch. There is namely, this is namely the batch, uh, batch shell shell command injection attack, which we included in the case study. 
Besides the comparison to the history states using the time series models, we also support the comparison to peer states using the outlier based anomaly models. We have the cluster definition. We define the points that makes this cluster. And we define the distance method. We define the clustering method. And then we can use the clustering results added in the alert clause and specify that we only want to return the outlier outlier events. Namely, this is still the SQL, uh, this is still the detection of the abnormally large data transfer on the SQL server, but here we compare with peer values, not the history values. The execution of a cycle query consists of four stages. In the first stage, we match the stream against the multi-event patterns defined with certain attribute constraints. Then, if there exists a stateful a computation block, then we compute and maintain the states over sliding windows. Next, we compute the large Boolean expression for the alert condition and check if the events pass or fail this expression. Finally, we return the desired attributes from the matched events and enforce further filters if necessary. Previously, we mentioned that a challenge for this streaming scenario is to efficiently handle the concurrent query execution. Our idea is that we can share the intermediate execution results among queries so that we can avoid some unnecessary data copies. We propose the master-dependent query scheme in which we partition the concurrent queries into master-dependent groups based on their similarities of semantics. And only the master query has direct access to the stream. The execution of the dependent queries depends on the execution of the master query, and it will uh, fetch the intermediate execution results from the master, uh, master, master query execution pipeline to its own pipeline. Right now, we have done this sharing up to the two stages, from the event pattern matching stage to the stateful commutation stage. And we will leave the sharing uh, for further stages in the future work. In this simple example, we have two dependent queries, which we define the state block, but have different state aggregations. So the query one has the state for the aggregation for the count, and the query two has the sum. And in the master query, we compute both the count and the sum. Therefore, we can leverage the intermediate execution results of the master query to execute the dependent queries. So we conduct a case study of a series of major attack, major types of attacks. We deploy our system in NEC Laboratories America, consisting of around 150 hosts, which and use the data up to 1.1 terabytes of data, uh, around 3.3 .3 billion events, with the event throughput around 3,750 events per second. Uh, in total, we constructed seven queries and we, uh, for four types of attack behaviors. We have done the APT attack, and then we have done the SQL injection attack. We, done the, we did the batch shell shock command injection attack, as well as several suspicious system behaviors, such as the uh, USB, USB usage, the command history blobbing, or the password file accesses. This is the uh, uh, execution statistics for the for the queries, and we measure the basically we, uh, all of the, the these queries include both the rule based queries as well as the advanced anomaly queries, and we measure several statistics. The general high level takeaway take from this chart is that all of these queries can finish within uh, two seconds, which means that the system latency is relatively small. Uh, besides, we did some pressure tests, and we want to understand so, uh, we want to understand how many enterprise hosts can our deployed server support. Basically, we deploy on a it's just a normal server with around 128 gigabytes of of memory and 12 cores. So we continuously increase the data input to the server, and so that the CPU usage will increase. When we reach the maximum CPU usage, the system throughput turns out to be 110,000 events per second. 
After some simple mathematics operations, we can estimate that this deployed server can support around 4,000 hosts. For more hosts, we can either scale, uh, scale up by using some high, higher performance servers, or we can make our system distributed. Notice that this stream query setting is very, uh, very uh, natural to the distributed Im implementation, and uh, we will leave it for future work. Besides, we have done a comprehensive evaluation of the performance of our concurrent query execution. Namely, we want to understand the uh, efficiency, uh, efficiency speed up that our master dependent query scheme can provide. So we, uh, we have proposed uh, several attack categories and several evaluation categories. Namely, we evaluate the sensitive file accesses, we evaluate the browser access files, the processes access networks, and the processes spawn. For the evaluations, uh, in our detailed algorithm design, we have different evaluation dimensions. For example, we, we can optimize on the edge build definition, we can optimize on the sliding window, we can optimize on the agent ID, we can op optimize on the type of state views. If you are interested, feel free to look at our paper. Basically, we have four attack categories and we have four evaluation categories. And we compose four queries for each joint category with certain variations. So in total, we have four times four times four equals 64 micro benchmark queries to evaluate our efficiency. Here is a simple uh, example micro benchmark query for the joint category, sensitive file accesses and state aggregation. And the below is the execution results uh, for this query. Namely, we measure the memory usage on our server uh, with the number of increasing number of concurrent queries. Basically, we use this query as a default, and we reduce the state field definition uh, as a second query, and we continuously successively add more queries to our evaluation. As we can see, when we have more concurrent queries, our system has a uh, better memory saving than the popular complex event processing engine CD. Uh, in total, for all of the 64 queries, we can achieve around 30% uh, uh, average memory saving. Besides, uh, not all of the queries are supported by CD, but we can support it, especially for the advanced anomaly queries, such as the time series anomalies, invariant-based anomalies, and outlier-based anomalies. So once the alerts are detected, the next step to counter APT attack is to investigate this alert. Yeah. And, uh, but however, the challenge for the investigation is that usually uh, is that this SQL system, on, SQL system only works on the streaming data. But the investigation requires us to uh, dive deep into the massive historical data. Recognizing such need, we uh, have uh, proposed another work that is published in this year's USENIX ATC, in which we built another query system that works on the historical data. Basically, and uh, our system also provides a compatible query language that is very compatible with this cycle query language. And we leverage the domain specifics to speed up the search of complex event patterns over the historical data and compare it with popular databases such as PostgreSQL and Neo4j, and we can achieve around 100%, uh, 100 times speed up. So if you are interested, feel free to take a look at this paper. In total, together, these two systems can work seamlessly for defending against the APTs. Namely, the cycle, query, uh, the cycle system launch a series of stream queries and continuously monitor the data stream. Once the alerts are detected, these alerts will be fed into the AIQR system. We can use the AIQR system to investigate such alerts, which may help us to discover the new attack patterns. These new attack patterns can then be fed into the cycle engine to create more queries. This is the feedback loop. So in conclusion, in this work, we have built and uh, we have designed and built a system called Cycle, stream-based anomaly query language system. Our system works on the streaming data of system monitoring data, which enables the timely anomaly detection. Our system provides a concise and expressive uh, language for four types of anomaly models, and we have 
uh, build our query execution engine based on the domain specifics of the data and the queries to speed up the execution. We have deployed our system on the, uh, in the NC Labs America, and we'll see if, uh, how it goes. Thank you. All right, now we're now open up for questions. Here we go. Hi, Hi Dong Yun Lee from Virginia Tech. Nice talk. Um, I just wanted to know how this kind of like a stream-based processing, the basically security analysis framework is different from more general, let's say, complex event-driven processing system, uh, whether the difference is mainly in, a, let's say, the languages and the query level or whether there is any architectural or like engine level differences. Okay, uh, thanks for the question. So basically we build our system on top of existing complex event processing engine CD. And the difference mainly lies in two aspects. For, first, the language part. Uh, the CD, uh, CD engine has provided a language. It is a SQL-like language. It is rather low level. So if you want to use it to express the complex, uh, complex events with certain attributes, then the CD query will be very large. That is the consistency part. Besides, we can support more types of anomaly queries, but CD cannot support because we have explicitly provided the stateful computation block as well as the extended environment block. And the second difference is the execution part. Basically, since CD is a general complex event processing engine, it does not uh, assume any underlying characteristics of the stream data. Therefore, uh, which we mean that it does not rely on the data characteristics, domain characteristics, right? Therefore, when it has multiple concurrent queries in execution, it will simply make data copies for each query. Even though there would, there maybe have some queries that are exactly the same or be very similar, but they make data copies. This will introduce the large overhead for the memory, and we already show it in our evaluation. But since we are a domain-specific language, we know our data, we know our query, then we can leverage the characteristics of our data and our query to speed up the execution. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chris. I'm from Google. Um, my question is mostly about the accumulation of state. So as you added a kind of a stateful primitive to let the rules be stateful and accumulate things over time, do you see state kind of explosions as different kinds of rules are created? You could imagine some kind of limitations from the DSL, and I, I didn't, haven't read the paper yet, so if, if the paper has some kind of enforcement on the kind of capabilities of state accumulation to avoid the explosions over time. Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, this is a very cool question. Yeah, actually it is. So because, I mean, the, the query is in the control of the users, right? And the data, we all know that the data is very huge. So if the users does not enforce any constraints for the query, then it will be an explosion. So in our current implementation, we do have some constraints. So we have some rough estimations. If the, if the estimated data is very huge, then we will have a warning for the user. But in general, for example, for all of the evaluations here, we first have to define the multi-event pattern right with certain attributes. Usually you should have some attributes. You do not want to search all of the things. Once you have the attributes, then the attributes will filter a significant amount of other unrelated events. And for the stateful computation, because we do not maintain all of the states, we, can, we, we have to explicitly define how many states that we want, want to maintain. For example, we can maintain the current state, the previous state, the previous, previous states. And then once we follow along the stream, then the old data will be discarded, will not be used. Therefore, uh, we, can, we, can, we can use this way to uh, mitigate the problem of explosion. Hi there, Jean Lima, VMware. Um, so, you ran a quite comprehensive experiment on NEC, but you didn't really comment on the accuracy of the results. So, I understand that ultimately it boils down to the quality of the rules, but do you have any data on false positives and eventually false negatives on, on the experiment you've run? Uh, yeah, so basically for all of the, all of the attacks that we evaluated, our query can capture them. But the problem is that uh, usually in the, in the real world setting, you do not, uh, if you want to capture a certain type of attacks, you cannot simply write one query because your one query may, may easily miss this attack. Usually you write multiple queries and let them concurrently run it. 
So at least you will hope that one query will capture the alerts. But in our uh, in our evaluations, all of the queries can capture alerts. Therefore, there will be no false negatives. But depending on the depending on the constraints that you specify, there may be exist the false positives. This uh, and also based on this observation, we propose that we should uh, do further investigation of the detection alerts because you can never rely directly on the alerts and uh, to maybe send it to your product team. You should do some further investigation to confirm that your alert is a true positive. Okay, thank you.